hey hi in this video we will see how to play with PySpark data frame here we're gonna use AWS glue ETL job constructed with using notebooks so here we will see that we will have a raw s3 bucket which contains the data and we're gonna build an ETL pipeline with using the notebook and using the PySpark engine which actually extracts the data from the source raw data and uh, with using that whenever the notebook or basically PySpark job extracts the data and it creates a data frame out of it now we will see that you know how do we can play with the or actually do a certain task on the data frame at notebook itself so that is the main aim of this demo now i'm in aws glue in my account so this is my account let's create a notebook here when we select when you want to create a notebook you're going to click on that notebook here you're going to choose the engine card spark that is basically PySpark spark generally card as then we're gonna use the upload notebook options click on choose file so when you click on a uh, choose file i have a notebook file which is actually kept in my repository i'm gonna share the data of this particular repository uh, notebook file uh, so now what we do is you know so with using this notebook you know with using this notebook file we're gonna create a etl job and then with using that option itself we're gonna play with the you know the uh, pyspark job data frame activities basically so here let me choose the uh, you know the pyspark um, you know the PySpark basically so here you ha I have a you know the Python notebook file so I'm going to select this file now we click on open and they automatically the file will be loaded here we need to choose a IAM role so for this case we're going to choose the IAM role that is actually something this role and I'm going to click on a create notebook so once you click on a create notebook it will take certain time which will actually loads the you know the the uh, PySpark note notebook here once it's get loaded we will come back again so far now we have to wait for certain minutes basically as you see here the you know PySpark notebook got loaded just now as you can see here and you can name the job something of title of any of your name so here let me call it as a data frame um, something like data frame lab basically so here we are trying to understand how the PySpark data frame you know helps us to do the real job actually yeah so once you load this um, you know glue studio notebook that is nothing but uh, you know Py PySpark file and then here we have a certain list of activities or basically certain list of uh, you know the steps that we're gonna walk through here and we try to understand you know how does that data frame works here okay so first one you need to actually run the first always run the first um, you know the tab here which actually loads the you know the required um, you know the required context that is nothing but PySpark glue uh, you know session will be loaded here with using this option so choose this particular you know um, um, uh, particular option here that is nothing but this particular tab and the selection can be uh, seen by this particular column and click on this button basically which actually you know starts the session in the sense when you selected a particular part a particular piece of code and then you click on the run button the execution gets started as you see here as, as soon as you execute this this piece of code the piece of code is now currently running you see that waiting for the session it's what does that mean is basically uh, the PySpark session is getting you know created here as you see here the session is already got created right now with that option we go to the next you know the next segment of the code so basically as you see that when I say segment of the code is nothing but you know part of the code of the particular you know the, uh, the PySpark notebook right so these are all the pieces of code that is written in the PySpark notebook which we are executing and try to understand what is how you know, what is it being 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 done here or what is going to be done here actually yeah so here we are actually if you see the code this is very much understandable that is nothing but importing the board 3 model creating the s3 bucket client listing the buckets right and then it is actually printing the bucket name. so basically it's it's listing all the bucket and try to print the bucket one after the other okay so let's see if it can do, do for us so i have executed that particular piece of code okay so how do you understand that what is the segment of the code that has been executed is something like this okay so we selected that part when I selected that particular segment of code, you know, so behind or basically beside it, there will be a blue vertical line. Okay, so and then here you go, right? So we have uh, got all the bucket names which are there in my AWS account. So if I go to the my S3 bucket, I have 15 buckets. So those 15 buckets are listed by here. Note that here PySpark job is doing this one. Okay, so remember that. So then what we need to do is we need to use the uh, bucket name which is needed for this demo. So I'm going to use the bucket name called glue workshop because as this is a glue workshop basically. 
so this is the bucket where i have uh, kept the you know the files which is needed for working with the data frame that is nothing but PySpark data frame so i'm going to use that bucket and try to replace with this you know the uh, s3 path basically um, you know so this is the basically we need to variable we need to change the variable value so that is s3 path equal to this particular s3 bucket name i'm, I'm pasting it here and what happens is if you see here this is the place where the actual the data frame gets started right so here remember that above if you go to the above code piece here we have created the uh, you know the glue job right and then uh, with using the so here we have the session of the glue job okay so with using the PySpark content right and then if you go down so we have actually uh, interacted with the boto3 now so here if you see that we are using the spark object so if i go above we have a spark object created with using the glue context with using the glue context spark session has been created right and with using that spark object we are what we are doing is we are actually read and load operation if you see here spark dot read dot load which is nothing but it's actually reads the data that is present underneath this particular path so i'm going to show you that path uh, quickly here so this is the bucket that we have uh, uh, copied there and if you go to the inputs here so within the input if you go to the lab one so here we have the files that is csc file underneath the csc file we have a sample dot file that is nothing but that is the file you know it's going to load it here and then it actually you know prints the schema so right here now it's a, it's basically we need to understand that right so basically data frame is nothing but it's a kind of a I know it's basically a set of data set uh, which contains the basically you know uh, predefined column names in the nothing but a data set which contains which is basically uh, in a proper format and has the um, you know the call proper column name right and in layman term you can consider the data frame equal to a SQL table actually right so now when you say SQL table with using the SQL table what are all the activity that we can do we can do a schema check we can print the we can actually query the table we can try to you know get the required data right so we can actually uh, check the properties of the of the table so all those activities will be done here if you see here we are actually printing the schema showing the top 10 rows and all so let's see what does happens okay so far now i have selected this segment and i'm going to run this now by clicking on this button so there is a run button here i have executed that code now it is running as you see here so basically how do you come to know that it is running there is a star mark in the square braces here as you see here which means that you know that particular segment of the code is being run by what it is run by the uh, basically notebook right so if you see here it has printed the output so basically data frame right so it actually created a data frame with using this line so this line enabled the PySpark job to create a data frame data frame by using the data that is raw data kept in the sample.csc file from this bucket from this path yeah and then once the data is loaded it created a data frame and data frame has a property called print schema and this is the schema that it has identified dynamically and then you know so with using this schema basically data also loaded so not this is just just like a table that got loaded and the table has a proper columns that's what i mean to say right so basically it's a data set which contains a set of predefined column headings basically or has a column names and then we have running a query that is show the top 10 you know uh, columns so the top 10 columns is been retrieved here all right so likewise you know basically you know you can do multiple jobs ahead as well so let's see few more jobs don't worry so i'm going to share this PySpark notebook file in the github repository github repository link is been shared in the video's description you can find it from there and try to experiment try to learn how does the data frame you know that activities can be done so here let's go to the next one that is write data as a percat file okay so let's see um if you go here so there is basically it converts the data frame into percat files and stores that into the particular path that is lab2 path okay let's see if it works all right so i'm going to run this now um so let's run this one basically so once i run that particular segment you see that that segment goes in a a star mark in the sense it is noted with the star mark okay so now we can find the output in this file that is nothing but input lab to output file so let's go to the input uh, so basically if i go to the inputs um so here is the input then the lab to and you go to the output so you have a perke files and there's a perke file which is just now loaded if you see here so basically that csc file is now converted into perke file which is basically you know it happens in a second so okay this is where you know the utilization of 
this is where the high capacity of the you know the pi spark job can be utilized and so we have done with the pi you know writing into the parquet files now let's let's see one more step that is reading the parquet files itself so that is the next command that is nothing but you know reading the particular parquet file from the so it has converted the csc file into parquet file now from the parquet file it is you know again reading it let's run the particular segment basically and let's see how does it actually prints okay so once the parquet file is been basically parquet file is loaded right looks like it has completed as you see that you know there is a, a square braces with the only file letter now we can print that with using this particular uh, you know the uh, segment so let me run this particular segment to actually see you know see the data here you go right so basically it has actually you know give us the you know, the schema of the parquet file format now right now again you can also play with the you know basically top five columns of the parquet file as well so that we will do in the next piece of code print which actually prints the five records present in the you know the particular parquet file format and indeed it is actually printing the top five records present in that parquet format right again you can do one more thing that is nothing but count the total number of rows present in the parquet files so let me run that piece of code that is which actually loads the number of counts of the rows as you see here it is currently running so now we have got that it is there is a one lakh records present underneath that so basically what i'm doing is i'm here we are actually playing with the data frame you know task basically data frame functionalities are basically what i can say you know what are all the activities that you can you know uh, uh, do on a data frame actually right or in a programmatic language you can call it as a functionalities of the data frame right nothing but understanding the functionality of the data frame in PySpark. now let's do one more job that is nothing but writing a query so basically you need to select a particular column that is called country right so now we're going to execute this particular piece of code. So I'm just running it right away. So you have a data frame of parquet type. From that, you are invoking a select function, wanting to know that, you know, so that is nothing but country. They basically select the a country column. So basically country column is nothing but it's a string one, right? So like that. So now this is basically getting the scheme of the particular column. Now you want to do one more step. That is nothing but show the content of the particular column. So you can also do that with using the next query. So here it will get you the top 20 records by when you run a, a particular command that is parquet basically data frame of parquet dot select column name that is country dot show which is nothing but it actually lists the top 20 records from that parquet file or data frames. So likewise we go to the next one that is nothing but select the uh, you know the select the country but with a certain parameter nothing but show top 10 with a truncate equal to false. So this is nothing but you know the additional query or additional option that you can run right. So basically by default show option tells you only top 20 records but if you want to get only top 10 records you can do with using the parameters that is being passed in the show functions now we go next one that is nothing but show the multiple columns and create a new data frame okay so that is how to do that this is a bit complex but we can directly execute here so i'm going to execute this frame while it executes here you go right basically it actually selects the country item type you here you go right? so basically it is uh, actually selectively selecting the columns and actually showing you the uh, you know the number of records belong to those columns only 10 rows top 10 rows so that is the what basically this is nothing but you know you are actually getting the subset of the particular you know data frame like that yeah and the next one is you know filter by country so you can also do a filter by country which i'm going to exclude here here so this is nothing but you know filter the data frame where country equal to united kingdom and show the top 10 records from that okay this is what basically so as you are seeing here, basically we are actually running a query like SQL queries like we do on a table and try to get the required data out of the table as you as your required format. Okay, so that is we have done. Next one that is filter by country and total revenue. So basically these are nothing but you know, uh, doing a custom queries on the particular data frame. So that also you can do right away. So we will do that as well. So this is bit, uh, you know, complex kind of records that is nothing but filter by a country and total revenue and create a new data frame out of it so basically we are actually creating a new data frame out of it so this is what it goes you know it shows us the next one is a perform the group by operations as well so as you have seen here we are actually performing the sql operations on the particular data frame like that yeah so here group by operations how do we how do we you know run a query which will do a group by operation on the PySpark data frame so i'm going to run it right away so let's see you know what does it shows so here you go right so it is basically grouping by the total revenue right and uh, and you know basically it is getting you the top 10 records okay so if you see here that is what we are getting here now all right so next one that is nothing but perform order by operation so basically group by operate you know order by is basically a kind of a sorting operations that you can do on the sql data you know sql 
a database table or SQL data set basically. So let's do the same operations by that is nothing but order by operations as well. So here you go, right? So we are done with the, the one more complex operation on the data, you know, the uh, data frame that is PySpark data frame. So this is what we have got. Okay. So basically till now, you know, I have shown you the basically top twin or top 20, uh, top 15 operations that you can do on the data frame. Um, here, we know, we have constructed the data frame with using the raw data that is stored in the in the S3 bucket and uh, with using the, you know, the notebook ETL job of AWS Glue, you know, we can able to do these operations. Okay, so basically, so these are all the operations that you can proactively do while you are constructing a, a fully fluent PySpark ETL job. All right. So with that note, I have shown you the things need to be shown in this video. That is nothing but, you know, how to create a data frame. What is the PySpark data frame? And what are all the you know the activities that you can perform or what are all the tasks that you can perform with using the data frame dynamically in the uh, you know the PySpark notebook here all right so with that note thank you very much for watching my video kind request please do subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot with that note thank you very much and see you in the next video